Welcome back uh, to Trading Day. Shares in super microcomputer came under pressure today. This is a tech infrastructure company specializing in servers that can be used for artificial intelligence. It announced a share offering, plans to sell 2 million shares. Let's get perspective from Lucas Tomiki, founder and managing partner of LRT Capital Management. Uh, we have seen some weakness in this stock, which of course has soared uh, amid AI enthusiasm. Um, is the stock issue why Supermicro is down today? Good afternoon, uh, Andrew. And yes, I believe that's right. Uh, there's a new offering of shares coming from Super Microcomputer. They are taking advantage of the tremendous rally that they've had in their share price this year. But you're seeing that also in other companies and asset classes that have run up spectacularly this year. New supplies of shares or IPOs coming to the market. And that's, I think, what's temporarily pushing down prices today. You mean just there's a lot of companies going public or issuing stock and the appetite is getting seasoned here? That's right. We are clearly in what me and some of my friends are calling the max stupid levels <laughs> of the market. And that's how things are trading. And so Super Microcomputer is issuing shares. Reddit is trying to IPO at a valuation that is quite uh, eye-popping, I think. MicroStrategy, Mike, uh, Mar Michael Saner's uh, group, which is viewed as a proxy on the Bitcoin market, mm -hmm. that is trading at a premium to NAV, and they've already done two convertible debt offerings this month alone, and it's not even the 20th yet. And so you're seeing more and more supply of speculative assets. And lest I forget, there was a meme coin um, that is going to be on the Las Vegas sphere, the dog with hat meme coin, right. which again has no intrinsic value and is valued as highly as Peabody, the largest coal producer in the United States. So that should give you a sense of where we are in the market cycle. These me so what did you say, we're at peak stupid? We are in peak stupidity in the markets, that's right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I mean, we are looking at huge growth, though, for some of these companies such as NVIDIA and Adobe, et cetera. Growth itself is fine, but growth attracts competition. Mm -hmm. And just because you have a growth doesn't mean you will benefit as a shareholder or an investor. Mm -hmm. So certainly there's growth in AI, but there's tremendous competition coming. AMD has come out with their own accelerators. Intel has come out with their accelerators called Gaudi 2. And one of the things that's underreported is that the Gaudi 2 accelerator is outperforming NVIDIA in certain applications already. Mm -hmm. And so we know that there's going to be tremendous growth in AI. I am not, uh, you know, I'm not sour grapes here crying about AI and, and this being something I missed. Mm -hmm. We all know AI is going to do well. But if you go back to 2000, we've had tremendous growth in e-commerce and the internet and, and world applications. And yet it took 13 years mm -hmm. for Microsoft to recover to the peak it had in 2000. And it took Cisco over 20 years to do that. Whoa. And that's in an environment where interest rates were cut from 6% to 1%. So interest rate cuts will not save you when the bubble eventually bursts. It's interesting you mentioned Cisco. They just pulled off a merger or got approval for a merger that they say will make them big players in AI. What a surprise. Um, everyone should use the, the term AI as many times as they can on any conference call they can. Would you be tempted to actually short some of these AI darlings? So we don't short individual names. We are short indexes and we're long select companies which we like within those indexes. So we don't like to short individual names because like GameStop has shown, like all these meme names have shown, there's really no idea how big uh, things can inflate. And I am in no way saying that we're anywhere near the top of the current market mania. Mm -hmm. Right now, over the last week or so, some of the more speculative parts of the market, such as super microcomputer, are down 20 to 30 percent. But it's very likely that they rebound and make new highs. I suppose some investors are buying the likes of Microsoft, thinking, well, that's a relatively conservative way to play AI. What would you think about a thesis like that? 
Certainly, there's a whole spectrum within this, right? You can get extremely speculative, again, dog with hat. You can be more conservative, super microcomputer, micro strategy, NVIDIA, various picks and shovel plays like TSMC. We, for example, own TSMC in our strategies. Uh, you could play it from Microsoft, Google. There's a million ways out there. These, all these assets lie in a certain continuum yes. of risk and valuation. I remember reading somewhere, I can't remember where, that historically when markets are in bubbles, everybody knows they're in bubbles and they all cheerfully admit that, but they all hope they'll find a, a more stupid person to sell the stocks to down the road. That's right. George Soros, uh, the great speculator George Soros, uh, has famously said that when he sees a bubble, he buys. Ah. So it's entirely rational for people to buy. I'm simply saying that we are in, in what could be called max stupid territory, mm -hmm. where everyone is expecting everyone else to be maximally stupid. Um, and, and to us, when we think about where we are, and trying to figure out when to get off the train, if you want to think about it that way, or when this will end, mm -hmm. we believe the real limits to the current mania ending have to do with inflation, inflation expectations, long-term interest rates, and oil prices. So if there's a disappointment on the uh, inflation front, it comes back uh, and they, they postpone interest rate cuts, that would be bad news? Yes, certainly the market is very clearly expecting interest rate cuts to occur. The Fed and all the central banks are nominally independent, but we know that they are under a lot of pressure. They are under political pressure because the president in the United States would love to be reelected and they would love lower interest rates to do that. The Treasury Secretary needs to sell an enormous amount of debt. The U.S. has an incredibly large deficit. And obviously, if interest rates are lower, they can sell them at lower rates. And there's pressure on the Fed to, set, to, to lower interest rates. And they've set a fairly low bar for doing so. Mm -hmm. They've said they only need to see a little bit more progress on inflation. And they don't even need to get to a 2% target. Um, so the bar is quite low. The, the expectation of cuts is already in the market. And the market is front running the Fed to go for the most speculative assets. Now, if mm -hmm. inflation expectations get out of control again, and for me, that would mean the 10-year Treasury popping up mm -hmm. over 5% again, or oil prices going over $100 a barrel, 110 120 who knows how high they could go. Mm -hmm. I think that really derails the current uh, situation.